Hello, welcome to uh, Ramblings About Movies video. Um, it's Sunday after Thanksgiving. I'm not sure when I will load this video. So by the time you see this video, it might be much later than Sunday after Thanksgiving. But I had a good Thanksgiving. I hope everybody did. Uh, ate way too much as I always do. Um, but Friday, I didn't do any shopping. My big event Friday was actually looking and waiting to see the new teaser Star Wars trailer, right? That's, that has been the big news all week. And I finally saw it around lunchtime Friday. Not a pirate version, but a nice high-definition version of uh, the teaser. And I'm sure many of you have seen it, but if you haven't, go Go look it up. Uh, my first reaction is I like it. Uh, as most people have already complained, that entire lightsaber looking thing that have uh, light coming out of two side that looked kind of silly. Hopefully, there's some functionality to what we saw uh, instead of like to just. Uh, for the sake of looking different or cool, it looked kind of silly, in my opinion. But until I see the movie, I'm not gonna comment much more about that because it's, it's a minor part. The rest of the trailer look interesting. I'm fairly excited about the movie. I'm a big fan of J.J. Abram. Uh, I like what he did with the Star Trek franchise. Some people didn't like it, but for me, it works. I like the way. I like his methods of uh, storytelling. At the end of the day, his camera angle, he's a director after all. So, you know, when it comes down to the story itself, I, I, I think there's other people involved in both Star Trek movie. But as far as a director, I like him. Um, but since we're talking about Star Wars, let me bring you back in time to my Star Wars experience. Okay, so I came to America in 1980, and to be completely honest, the whole Star Wars thing in 1980 with the Empire Strike Back went over me. I didn't even, I can't recall even hearing or thinking or wanting to see. The Empire Strike Back, you know, my first year in America was a trying time, you know, young kid arriving in a new country, getting to use, getting used to the new world, the new environment, that was a handful in itself, so I didn't even know about that movie, but when Return of the Jedi came, out in 1983 you know by now I have had a full three years in America my English is fairly decent I have started to go to see a lot of movies uh, on the big screen and I did not get a chance to see um, the first two Star Wars movies uh, because I didn't have access to them um, I think back in those days, either you had to rent VHS or catch them on HBO, and I had neither options. But I had some friends that invited me to go um, to see the movie at a drive-in, and that was my first <laughs> experience at a drive-in. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was great. Um, it was a double features. And, uh, you know, the whole concept of watching a movie in a car was just so much fun for me uh, as young, young teenagers. And so I saw the movie uh, at the drive-in and my reaction to it was, wow. Okay, I, I can tell you the, the whole concept of Jedi, lightsaber, all this spaceship stuff that was firing... Sh oh, it, I have never seen anything of like that on on this big screen. Okay, um, prior to that, the only space stuff that I saw was rerun of Star Trek on TV or uh, 
that's it really you know I mean I, I haven't seen I, I don't think I have even seen Battlestar Galactica rerun on TV yet but it's just Star Trek so Star Wars was just something so new so different so mind-blowing that I have to say that I love that movie I certainly didn't mind the Ewoks you know maybe you know, sure. Now that I rewatched the movie, suddenly I have a different feeling about how good the movie was, it or is. Um, but at the time, it was mind blowing, and I couldn't wait to get home and find a way to see the first two Star Wars movie and saw them. I did, and I think I'm in the majority with a lot of views that uh, Empire Strike Back is best of the three I love that movie okay I love that movie I have seen the movie so many times probably more than any other Star Wars movie um, you know so get and so speaking about Star Wars now we can go on to you know the prequel okay I can tell you that at the time when the new the New Hope, uh, the very first one that came out in 1999. That was probably the most anticipated film that I can ever remember. It's the only film that I actually went to see the very earliest show I I can. You know, normally I wait in a day or two um, to go see a movie before because I just don't want to deal with the crowds, the line, the bad seating. Uh, I'd rather wait one weekend after the the movie came out to go see a movie because then you have less chance of having bad seats. Uh, but when the new Star Wars movie came out in 1999, I actually stood in line to see a midnight show. And luckily, we got decent seats. And wow, I have to say that's one of the, one of the bigger letdown experiences that I had it changed my view on George Lucas forever um, you know up until that point I really didn't pay much attention to who directed the movie you know I just associate all the previous Star Wars with George Lucas okay but then after that movie and how let down I felt I kind of Go back and pay more attention to who was it that responsible to make the other Star Wars movie. And not to my surprise, the man that directed The Empire Strike Back is not George Lucas. George Lucas, you know, I, I, well, the, the, the grand idea of Star Wars, the prequel, the three the prequel movie, is not, it's nothing wrong with it. The whole cons, the whole storytelling on what happened. It, to me, it was not a surprise. I kind of guess what happened to young An young Anakin. Uh, what happened to him to turn him to the dark side. The whole character arc was not a surprise to me. Uh, uh, I could have guessed that even before seeing the first movie. Um, but the story itself is okay. But I felt that the, the directing was very clunky and the dialogue was just atrocious, atrocious, okay? I mean, even the best actor out there just could not deliver the horrendous dialogue that Lucas and his teams of writers uh, put together for them. Um, you know, I mean, I rewatched the first movie yesterday. I tried to. I could not finish it by the time uh, they were in the underwater scene after Jar Jar Bing uh, and the two Jedi went into the little ship. By the by, the end of that water scene, I had to turn it off because I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, there are so so many unnecessary stuff that's going on in that movie. You know, pure. It's it may be eye candy for some people, but. The, the underwater scene is a perfect example of what's wrong with the movie. You know, you have the them in a ship, go in the water, and then a big fish ate them, and then another big fish ate that fish, 
and then they keep seeing other big creep big sea creature that want to eat them. I mean, once was enough. How much more do we need of this? And the CGI of that movie was not all that good in my opinion. Uh, for some reason, it didn't work for me. Uh, you know, when you look at, you know, like the, the Lord of the Rings movie, I think one of the great things that Peter Jackson was able to do was marry, he, he, he married CGI motion capture with real environment which make it absolutely gorgeous but when when I watched the Star Wars movies that was done by George Lucas even the droids army when they were in a big f green field to fight with the Jar Jar people even the grass looked fake it just there's the, the, the something maybe it's me but for me, that just didn't work. Um, and as far as the casting, no doubt Jar Jar Bing and his entire race, the way they talk, annoys me. Uh, that was part of the reason why I had to turn it off uh, after the first 30, minute of the 30 minutes yesterday because I, I can't take it. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, often when I hear people complain about the prequels, I rarely hear anyone complain about Samuel Jackson. I love Samuel Jackson. I enjoy many of his movies, okay? He make me laugh. He's one of those badass that I enjoy. But I felt he was one of the most miscast person in the movie. Somehow, when he walk around, I just don't see a Jedi. I see a cool dude, okay, from the hood. <laughs> and when he delivered his line, Unlike other Jedi's, he's just, it's almost too cool. You know, it's just his mannerism, his, the way he delivered the line is, is Samuel Jackson, okay? It's, not, it's nothing wrong with it. I just think that he was miscast in those movies. And, you know, uh, and I, I rarely hear anyone complain about Samuel Jackson, but for me, when I watched that movie, his entire, all the scenes that he's in and the way he talks, the way he moves, just somehow doesn't fit. But that's that's just me. You know, so to wrap this up without going to a non-stop half an hour rant of how bad the three movies are. Um, you know, Hayden Christensen, horrendous, horrendous acting job, okay? I mean, I don't know how Lucas plucked this kid from obscurity but it's not a sh surprise to me that he went back into obscurity after those three movies because wow even Natalie Portman could not pull something out of him to make it more believable uh, but you know there are just so many things wrong with many things in all three movies the, and the, the story itself is okay I can live with the story but the sheer amount of eye candies unnecessary eye candies and poor dialogue just kill it for me for many of those three movies you know I mean when I come down to it uh, sometimes the CGI overtake common sense and George Lucas put in way too many things that just to me not needed more, more focus should have been on the dialogues and the acting uh, but that's it uh, I can't wait to see the Star Wars movies and what JJ Abram will bring to the table so hopefully in two years or well, next Christmas um, we, I will have a good reviews for that movie go see the trailer if you haven't okay anyhow have a good Sunday and thanks for watching. Bye.